You've all been following the Brexit debate, no doubt. We've seen Article 50 triggered. We know almost certainly that we're going to have, at the very best, a hard Brexit. And it seems that the Prime Minister is prepared to walk away from any deal at all rather than accept a bad deal. And part of that plan B, i.e. no deal, feeling a little bit null, like Noel Edmonds at the moment, but part of that plan B would be for the UK to become a kind of tax haven, a Singapore of the West, so to speak. The idea is that we would then attract and retain business, commercial entities in this country, generating employment and all the rest of it and tax, by virtue of the lower rate, or at least it will be a significant contributor to their reason to stay or to come here in the first place. Some would raise some questions over the validity of that, certainly as a long-term differentiator. Having low tax rates is eminently copyable. We've even got the US who, pre-election, Trump was talking about a 15% rate. It seems like it's likely to be more around 30, but that's a significant reduction of the federal UK corporation tax rate. So they wouldn't be the only one. Turkey are going to a rate of something like 9%. I believe, so we've, we've seen in, in newspaper reports. So one would question that. One would also question anyway, without spending too long on this aspect of, of the point I want to make, is that you know, if you're getting less tax, it is very dependent on it working commercially of more companies paying that greater amount of tax on greater amounts of revenue that they generate in this country, because otherwise we're going to have a severely diminished set of social services, services provided by the government if they haven't got enough money. Leaving that aside, there is a very strong argument for advisors, I believe, to take on this, this interesting debate around what effect a tax haven has. What we do know is that tax does motivate people, it does change behaviours, and to remind their clients that with the benefit of advice, they could already be living in a so-called legitimate tax haven. Um, I think we have a very strong job to promote the legitimacy part of that, because there is considerable fear, it seems, and it's been very well engendered by HMRC by their attacks on aggressive tax avoidance. There's fear, therefore, for many that the most mundane and permissible tax planning that results in a lower tax bill, of course, otherwise it wouldn't be that good planning, is something to be scared of. Anything with the use of the word offshore in it is something to be shunned. Even using carry forward relief under pension arrangements, which would appear to allow you to, not appear to, it actually does allow you to contribute more than 40,000 or whatever your annual allowance is, then people are concerned about it and are raising questions. So advisors do have a job to reassure clients, number one, that legitimate tax planning is perfectly fine, of course. Anything that's permitted and specifically even encouraged by the legislation, like pension contributions, ISAs, business property relief, qualifying arrangements, many of the inheritance tax schemes that we see and have available to us and have had for many years are all perfectly allowable. Put that lot together with the massive investment changes, changes to investment taxation that we've had this year, which I've talked about before, you know, the dividend tax allowance, the personal savings allowance, the fact that tax is no longer deducted on interest, lower capital gains tax, all of those things, lower capital gains tax rates, contribute to a very benign, almost unlike it has ever been before, tax regime. So be aware of, being aware of those, those reliefs and exemptions, together with having the advice that can apply them to your particular circumstances is a very strong message for clients. And done properly, of course, the advice can result in a very low effective tax rate on your capital and your income. So job to reassure and a job to get people even excited about the fact that they can have their own personal tax haven. Sounds a bit trite, but it might just get the interest of some clients. We've written about this and all the aspects, the contribu contributory aspects to that tax haven status in TechLink, you know where to go.